Welcome back. It's good that you're able to join us once again as we study through the heroes of the faith. We're going to be looking at King David. What a wonderful example we have here of a man of God, a man of faith, a man renowned throughout history, a man who had a throne that was established forever. Towards the end of his life, just before he died, the prophet Nathan was sent by God to speak to Daniel. This is part of what he said to him. We find it in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 12 to 16. When your days are complete and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your descendants after you, who will come forth from you, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I shall be a father to him, and he will be a son to me. When he commits iniquity, I will correct him with the rod of men and the strokes of the son of men. But my loving kindness shall not depart from him. As I took it away from Saul, whom I removed from before you, your house and your kingdom shall endure before me forever. Your throne shall be established forever. This is the King David. But we get ahead of ourselves now. We get to go back and remember that when we studied uh, about Ruth, she married uh, Boaz and they had a son, Obed, and he had a son, Jesse. And it's now the sons of Jesse that we're going to be speaking about. We remember that Samuel, the prophet, was sent to anoint King Saul, but he was a great disappointment and he followed the ways of men and departed from the ways of God. So God sent Samuel to anoint another king to replace him. And so we take up the passage in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 10 to 13. Thus Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has chosen none of these. And Samuel said to Jesse, are these all your children? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, and behold, he is tending the sheep. Then Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes. So he went and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, with beautiful eyes and a handsome appearance. And the Lord said, Arise and anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. And Samuel arose and went to Ramah. This was the anointing of David. But Saul was still the official king of Israel. And a great many things happened in the meantime. The Philistines came and attacked the nation of Israel. And they raised up a great champion, a giant of a man called Goliath. And all the children of Israel were afeared of him and would not stand in front of him and fight him. Until that was, until David, the young man, came. And so we see uh, David before King Saul in 1 Samuel chapter 17, starting in verse 34. But David said to Saul, Your servant was tending his father's sheep when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock. I went out after him and attacked him and rescued it from his mouth. And when he arose up against me, I seized him by his beard and struck him and killed him. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like them, since he has taunted the armies of the living God. And David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of the, this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. And so he went to face this giant who is clad in armor, had a mighty sword, and David just had a stick and some small stones and a sling. But notice the faith of this young man of God, this hero of the faith. In the same chapter, chapter 1 Samuel 17, verses 43 to 47. The Philistine said to, da the, the Philistine said to David, 
Am I a dog that you come with me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine also said to David, Come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the sky and the beasts of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have taunted. This day the Lord will deliver me into uh, in, in, deliver you into my hands, and I will strike down strike you down and remove your head from you, and I will give the dead bodies of the armies of the Philistine this day to the birds of the sky and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not deliver by the sword or spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. These are words of a man of faith, and it happened just as he said. Goliath was slain, the armies of the Philistine were routed and defeated, and the birds of the air and the animals of the field came and ate their dead bodies. David went on to be a, a great king, uh, a mighty general in front of his armies, and he built up the strength and the power of the nation of Israel because of his faithfulness. Now, David wasn't a perfect man. He sinned. He sinned sometimes terribly. But the thing is, he recognized his sin. He repented of his sin, and he returned to God. This is the mark of a man of faith. This man, King David, God said that he had the, the heart of God. Notice what we read in the New Testament in Acts chapter 13, verses 22 and 23. Speaking about Saul, he says, After he had removed him, he raised up David to be their king, concerning, concerning whom he also testified and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will do all my will. From the descendants of this man, according to the promise of God, God uh, uh, to the promise, God has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. Jesus was a direct descendant of King David. And Jesus is reigning now on his throne, the throne of David in heaven. David was a man, as we read, a man where God said, he was a man after my own heart. He was a man of faith because he believed God, he obeyed God, and he served God all his life. What a wonderful example for us. Thank you once again for watching. And please come back next week as we look at another hero of the faith.